method. So as I have told you earlier in my previous video on perturbation theory that for a multiple electronic system like this, okay, like this here, for multiple electronic system, the Schrodinger equation becomes very much difficult to solve because there are some factors like electronic, electronic repulsion, electronic attraction, and that of others. Okay, so for these terms, because of these terms, the Schrodinger wave equation for the multiple electronic system becomes very, very, very much difficult to solve. So to solve the Schrodinger equation for multiple electronic system, so what do we do? We just introduce some approximate methods. One of which is the perturbation theory and another one is variation method. The focus of our today's video lecture is all about variation method. So taking you towards the derivation of the variation method. So moving on towards the derivation, first of all what you need to do is to consider the ground state for an atom. Okay, so we have to consider the ground state for an atom that says H psi naught is equal to E naught psi naught okay so this here is the ground state wave function and ground state energy so what we do basically we just consider the ground state energy for our system so the next thing that we have to do is to take is to multiply psi hysteric on both sides and then taking the integration okay so now we have to multiply with psi hysteric okay so here is psi hysteric multiplied by h psi naught and then we have to take the integration and here this is the derivative of integration and again what I have to do is to take the integration and multiply by psi, psi hysteric and here is e naught and then again psi naught since as you know that this e naught will go out of the integration uh, here is my derivative and uh, this e naught will go out of the integration so I am left with um, e naught psi hysteric psi naught d tau and here I have is psi hysteric h psi naught d tau so now what i am going to do is to find the value for e naught okay so if i want to find the value of e naught what will happen this part of the equation this part of the equation will go down here okay so e naught becomes equal to integration psi hysteric h psi naught d tau divided by psi hysteric psi naught d tau okay so now what do we do in variation method we replace our wave function with a trial wave function okay what do we do um, in variation method we replace our wave function with a trial wave function okay let's just consider a trial wave function of phi okay so let's just consider a trial wave function of phi okay this is a trial wave function so now what i have to do is to replace phi in place of psi everywhere in this equation and my energy becomes e phi okay so in place of psi hysteric what i'm going to write is phi hysteric and then again i have hamiltonian and in place of psi naught i have to write phi naught d tau divided by in place of psi hysteric i'm going to write phi hysteric again phi naught d tau okay so the statement for the variation method is that if i replace my wave function with some other wave function for example this was the wave function of ground state energy if i replace this wave function with some other wave function like that of phi then what happens the energy that comes out after replacing the wave function okay after replacing the wave function the energy that comes out is more than the ground state energy okay so the statement says that this e phi okay this e phi should be greater or equal to e naught okay so the statement for variation method says that if i have replaced my ground state wave function with some other wave function then the value of energy should be greater than the ground state energy or should be equal to the ground state energy means that the ground state energy is the lowest possible energy okay so now what i have here is a question let me just write it Okay, so now consider that I have a wave function psi is equal to x into l, x into l minus x. Okay, so this here is my uh, wave function and uh, the boundary conditions from 0 to l. So what I have to do here is just consider the equation for energy. Okay, so let's just call this energy an Ea and write the further formula. I had the formula equal to Ea is equal to psi hysteric 
integration h hamiltonian being applied on psi naught d tau divided by psi hysteric psi naught d tau okay so this was the formula for the energy so what i'm going to now do now is to just plug in the values okay so in place of psi what i'm going to write is x into l minus x okay and then what i have to do is to place the boundary condition of 0 to l okay so here as you can see i can place uh, the boundary condition from 0 to l so the boundary conditions from 0 to l and in place of psi static what i'm going to do i'm going to write x into l minus x x into l minus x okay and in place of hamiltonian operator you know the value for the hamiltonian operator is minus 8 square over 8 pi square m okay you know the value for the hamiltonian operator i've just plugged in the value for hamiltonian operator d square over dx square okay so this is the value for the hamiltonian operator okay and the next thing i have is again psi naught and in place of psi naught what i'm going to do is i'm going to plug in the value again x into l minus x and then what i have here is the d x okay so now placing the divide sign and in the denominator form what i have here is again an integration again an integration from 0 to l and then i have psi no psi static and in place of psi static i'm going to, I'm going to write x into l minus x and then psi naught again x into l minus x and then in place of dx what i'm going to write is d dt in place of in place of dt what i'm going to write is dx okay so this is what just i have plugged in the values so now solving further it's minus h square over 8 pi square m okay this part this part is a constant okay this part is a constant so this part will go out of the integration so i have written it out of the integration okay so what i am left with inside the equation is from 0 to l i have from 0 to l and this x okay so x into l minus x again x into l minus x and then i have d square over dx square x into l minus x so i have d square over dx square and multiplying this x inside it becomes xl minus x square okay this becomes xl minus x square okay and at the end what i have is a derivative okay so placing the derivative so here is my derivative dx okay so next thing this x multiplied by this x becomes x square so from 0 to l i have x square and l minus x l minus x forms l minus x square okay so it forms l minus x square okay so and at the end i have dx again i have dx and here is also another bracket the inside bracket okay and this bracket is for overall okay uh, so now what i'm going to do is first of all i'm going to solve this part of the equation here okay first of all i'm going to solve this part of the equation here so i'm going to write this part on a separate page okay uh, i'm going to write this part on a separate page here so first of all i'm going to solve this part okay first of all i'm going to solve this part and then i'm going to plug in the value okay so let me just solve this part so now solving this part as you can see here that i have two derivatives so what i'm going to do is write again d over dx again d over dx in place of xl here is my xl minus x here okay so first of all i'm going to apply the first derivative okay so applying the first derivative as you know if i apply the first derivative on this part okay the derivative of x what is the derivative of x the derivative of x becomes equal to 1 because you know the formula for the derivative that if i have a derivative of x like if i have d over dx into x then what i have to do in the in case of derivative this power okay what i have to do i have to subtract 1 from the power and this power will go behind it okay if i have x minus uh, x raised to power 1 minus 1 then it becomes 0 x to the power 0 and x to the power 0 is 1 so 1 into 1 becomes 1 so this is the basic formula for the derivative so now applying this formula here first of all what i'm going to do is to apply this derivative of x as i have done here that applying the derivative of x give me an answer equal to 1 so this here is the l and this l is left behind so l into 1 okay and applying the derivative on x square the derivative on x square d over dx into x square forms as you know the formula the power will go behind this power will go behind then it becomes 2x and what i have to do next is to subtract 1 from the power and 2 minus 1 okay so the answer becomes 2x 
1 or I can write it as 2x. So the derivative of x squared becomes 2x. So my equation here becomes d over dx l minus 2x. Okay. So the next thing what I have here is again taking the derivative. As you know that the derivative of constant is 0. Okay. So the derivative of this l becomes equal to 0. Okay. And the derivative of 2x, okay, taking the derivative of 2x, d over dx into 2x, the 2 will go uh, far behind, so it becomes d over dx into x, okay, and you know the derivative of x, I have just found here the derivative of x is equal to 1, okay, so what I am going to do is to write 2 into 1 and this becomes 2, so the derivative of 2x becomes equal to 2, okay, and in place of l, the derivative of l becomes equal to the derivative of l, so I have just applied this derivative on here, and then here so derivative of l is equal to 0 and the derivative of 2x become equal to 2 so what I have here is the derivative becomes equal to minus 2 okay so this part of equation becomes equal to minus 2 so what I'm going to do now is to place this value is to plug in this value back in our previous equation okay this was where we had left okay this was where we had left we have just now solved this part of the equation okay we have just now solved this part of the equation okay so now I'm going to plug in the values on the next page okay so now I'm going to plug in the values first of all I'm going to write the equation again uh, my equation is e a is equal to minus h square over 8 pi square m okay and from 0 to l x into l minus x and in place of the next uh, derivation I have just found the uh, answer of minus 2 okay dx and the next thing in the denominator I have is from 0 to l x square l minus x square d of x okay so what I'm going to do now is I am now going to solve this denominator separately okay so solving this uh, denominator separately I have is 0 to l x square l minus x whole square dx okay so I'm going to now solve this part separately okay so solving this part separately I have is um, in, uh, you can you know the formula for a minus b whole square that the for opening this formula my answer comes out to be l square plus x square minus 2 l x so what I've done here is just use the formula of a minus b whole square is equal to a square plus b square minus 2 a b okay so I've just used the formula here okay so the next thing I have is I'm going to multiply this x square inside okay now multiplying this x square inside I have x square l square plus x4 minus 2 l x 3 and I have dx so now I'm going to apply the integration on all of this okay so applying the integration you know the formula for the integration if I have x square then this becomes x 3 by 3 okay the integration of first part here becomes x 3 by 3 and since this l square is a constant so it will go out of the integration and I am left with l square uh, simply and here again that integration becomes x 5 by 5 and here again the integration becomes minus 2 l x 4 by 4 and I have bound equation from 0 to L. Okay, so what I've just done here, I've just taken 2L out of the integration and took the integration of x3. Okay, I've just taken the integration of x3. I have not taken the integration of 2L because 2L was a constant and so it has gone out of the integration. Okay, so the next thing I have is I'm now going to, going to place the upper value limit, upper boundary limit. Okay, so up, uh, placing the upper boundary limit, I have in place of x3, I'm going to write L. So it becomes L squared into L3 by 3 plus in place of L, it becomes in x, it becomes L5 by 5 minus this 2 will cancel out with this. So 2 to the 4 and I have L into L4 by 2 okay so this is the upper boundary limit so now placing the lower boundary limit as you know placing the lower boundary limit this becomes equal to 0 because uh, placing the 0 in place of x this part becomes 0 again this becomes 0 again this becomes 0 so I have lower boundary limit equal to 0 okay so this becomes L5 by 3 plus L5 by 5 minus L5 by 2 okay so I, be, I have l5 by 2 okay so the next thing I have is again uh, I'm going to take the LCM okay so taking the LCM of this part 5 to the 5 to the 10, 10 30 so LCM of this part becomes equal to 30 30 divided by 3 becomes 10 so it becomes 10 l5 30 divided by 5 becomes 6 6 and this becomes 6 l5 and again I have this minus and 30 divided by 2 becomes 15 and I have 15 l5 Okay, so now subtracting and adding, I get an answer 10 plus 6 minus 15, I get an answer equal to L5 by 13. Okay, so this part, the answer of this part of the equation is has become equal to L5 by 30. Okay, 
so now I'm going to find the answer of this part of the equation x into l minus x okay so now finding the answer of this part of the equation now taking the upper the numerator so now taking the numerator I have here is x into l minus x minus 2 d of x so this is my numerator okay so now solving this numerator I have this minus 2 will go out of the integration minus 2 has gone out of the integration and x into l minus x so this becomes xl minus x squared d of x okay so now taking the integration further what I have is minus 2 and integration of xl becomes l x2 by 2 and similarly the integration of x2 becomes x3 by 3 okay so now placing the boundary condition l and 0 so now I'm going to place the upper boundary condition here placing the upper boundary condition I have l l2 by 2 minus l3 by 3 minus placing the lower boundary condition and the lower boundary condition is again 0 so I am left with minus 2 l3 by 2 minus l3 by 3 taking the LCM I have minus 2 into 3 to 6 and the answer is 2L3 okay so the answer is 3L3 minus 2L3 becomes L3 by 6 and here is my minus 2 okay so now we have found an answer to this part of the equation okay so where is this part this part is present here okay so what we have done we have just found an answer to this part of the equation here and we have found an answer to this part of the equation here so now I'm going to just plug in these values okay so I'm going to plug in these values here okay so now as you can see here that I have EA is equal to minus 8 square over 8 pi squared m okay and in place of this I'm going to write the answer minus 2 L cube by 6 okay so now I'm going to write minus 2 L cube by 6 and in place of this part I'm going to write its answer L5 by 30 L5 by 30 okay so now this minus and this minus become plus and this 2 will go here okay so my answers become answer become 2 8 square over 8 pi squared m and here this 6 will go in the denominator and this will go up as these are multi division per division okay so this becomes l cube by l5 this 30 will go up multiplied by 30 and 6 will go down multiply by 6 okay so now 6 1 the 6 6 5 the 30 and this 5 being multiplied by 2 becomes 10 so I have a factor EA is equal to 10 8 square over 8 pi square m and dividing L3 by L5 I have an answer L square in the denominator okay L square so as you can see here what I'm going to do I'm going to take this 10 and pi square out so taking 10 over pi square out and I am left with the formula here 8 square over 8 ml square okay the answer to 10 over pi square becomes 1.0 okay and this here is 8 square over 8 ml square okay so this is the answer of EA so now as you can see here okay so now as you can see here the answer of EA is greater than E0. The answer of EA is greater than E0 or I can say greater or equal to E0. Okay, because the answer of E0, because the value of E0, E0 has the formula equal to 8 square over 8 ml square. And whereas if I compare this EA with E0, EA has an extra factor of 1.014. Okay, so when this 1.014 factor is being multiplied by this part of the equation, then my answer is greater as compared to the ground state energy. So this is the statement of my variation theorem by variation method that what we have to basically do, we have to just consider the ground state and then we have to plug in the wave function and other wave function, the guest wave function, the trial wave function. Okay, we have to uh, replace it, we have to replace the ground state wave function with the trial wave function and then we have to uh, calculate the energy and then we have to compare this energy with the ground state energy and then as you can see that this new energy that we have found through our trial wave function is greater as compared to the ground state energy so this proves our statement that ground state energy is the lowest energy okay so that was all for today's video inshallah see you in the next video do not forget to like the video and subscribe the channel